Um, one of the joys that I've had is to take my gift, go into corporate America, and literally deal with people who are corporate and turn them into choirs and help them experience the unity of what it feels like when you work together and you sing together and you do something together and it transcends into the ability to be productive in your workplace. And so I've worked with several corporate um, groups where I, I would, in fact, want the, my most recent one was the challenge to take uh, a con conference group of corporate people who are just straight corporate, turn them into a choir in five minutes. <laughs> And so, and to see this group of people who were sitting in, the, in their corporate meetings and like very, <laughs> and then you say, all right, we're going to challenge you. And in five minutes, we're going to turn you into a gospel choir. And to watch how they just shifted so quickly, just because you can inspire. And so I, I think that when you, when in corporate America, a lot of times we're so, we're so rigid and we are, we feel like we can't release our feelings and we can't really show any kind of anything. And for that reason, we become less joyful because it feels like we, you know, um, we can't breathe. I said, the word is, you know, that, that in the beginning it says God created man and he said he breathed the breath of life into him and man became. And a lot of times what's happening is we don't breathe enough into people so they can become. And so life can happen in corporate America. Life can happen in a youth group. Life can happen whenever you breathe life. And joy will come when the breath is there and you become a living soul. Joy is the answer. My name is Dr. Walt Whitman. I am here in the city of Chicago. Um, I was led to this place because of Lynn Sanders, um, a young lady that is uh, very supportive of my work. And uh, she's uh, always kind of leading me into new places. <laughs> I am the founder and director of the Soul Children of Chicago, which is the oldest internationally acclaimed Grammy Award winning youth gospel choir in the nation. We're very proud of that. Uh, drug-free, gang-free, academically inclined young people from 7 to 17. Um, we're celebrating 39 years this year. And I, as I, I say, um, very, um, the, the, whatever, um, scandal-free, <laughs> you know, as, as, a, as a person that works with youth and a lot of times in the youth, and people that work in the youth arena, a lot of times you hear a lot of things that are negative. And so I'm very proud to say that we haven't had that. Um, and what we do is actually inspire young people, literally globally all over the world, and to bring that joy um, by breathing life into their purpose and then allowing them to become purposeful. Um, and so with, uh, with the Soul Children, I, my, uh, my little motto is that uh, we're training up the next generation of global leaders. And so, um, and as a musical group, we've, we definitely have developed um, teachers and uh, principals and pastors and worship leaders and artists. And um, so we have a long list of folks who have been quote unquote breathed into and life given to and purposed. My purpose, um, I guess, is to, uh, to lead large bodies of people into the presence of God. And so to give people an experience, every time I leave them, I leave them with something that is undeniable. So that, that, I mean, my purpose is, so that means wherever I work, wherever I go, you know, when I do workshops and teachings and whatever, and even with the soul children over these 30 years, I can look back and see that what I've put in them is still in them. And, and, and as they're growing and as they're ex and expo being exposed to different things in life, we've gone from across the world. And just to see that their lives literally have changed and it is not a, a, a moment of change. It is a lifetime of change. And for that, you become joyful. I mean, it becomes, you wake up knowing, okay, what can I do next? Um, how else can we impact? What else can we do? Which is, after 39 years, that's why I believe that our mission is still fresh. We're still relevant. So we're not a group that, you know, a lot of times what you have is groups or organizations that have uh, disappeared over a period of time, or they become, you know, people just like, okay, 
can we find a new thing? Uh, with soul children, what I'm finding out is that as every year we regenerate ourselves. And so we begin to see new, th every year something new. So we're even now in the 39 years, we're doing something new. So the freshness and the joy of that. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. God keeps my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back cause God is. That's enough. <laughs> it, the, the greatest joy for me is to know that my purpose is not geared into what I do, but it is who I am. And that um, when I release something in the atmosphere, literally it comes to me. And so uh, my greatest joy was to um, create this in this pandemic, in this time when people are stressed out and going through, um, was to create a uh, what we call a drive-in soul Santa village, <laughs> and and it started with us really just getting toys for tots had given us four hundred toys, and so all we had was toys, and so my 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 joy my desire was is that I said I would like to create something that would really would bless our city and bless the, and, and, and show the, the, the nation how young people can make an impact. And so in the last four days, it went from 400 toys to 400 boxes of food to, to Sarah Lee giving us uh, muffins and things. And we've got apple cider. We've got ABC News coming. We've got, I mean, it went from, it went from what I called nothing to something and it and the joy of it was how people began to respond to what I was inspired to do. And so now my joy is that everything I desired is being fulfilled. And we're not fulfilled for me, fulfilled for the people and for the kids. Um, my kids are going through because as an artist, you know, I, you know, as an artist, we've not been able to perform. We've not been able to do what we needed to do. And so the stress level is very, very high. Um, I'm, the fatigue of the pandemic has began to take effect on some of my young people. And so at this point, the joy of being able to figure out how we can take them out of that level of depression, out of that level of stress, even if it's just for a moment, and to take that and to release that into a city where we can partner with other young or youth organizations and other organizations and to watch it happen right before our eyes in a period of weeks when you had nothing and now you got so much, you don't even know how to handle it. <laughs> um, one of the joys that I've had is to take my gift, go into corporate America and literally deal with people who are corporate and turn them into choirs and help them experience the unity of what it feels like when you work together and you sing together and you do something together and it transcends into the ability to be productive in your workplace. And so I've worked with several corporate um, groups where I, I would, in fact, want the, my most recent one was the challenge to take uh, a con conference group of corporate people who are just straight corporate, turn them into a choir in five minutes. <laughs> and so, and to see this group of people who were sitting in, the, in their corporate meetings and like very, <laughs> and then you say, all right, we're gonna challenge you. And in five minutes, we're gonna turn you into a gospel choir. And to watch how they just shifted so quickly, just because you can inspire. And so, I think that when you, when in corporate America, a lot of times we're so, we're so rigid and we are, we feel like we can't release our feelings and we can't really show any kind of anything. And for that reason, we become less joyful because it feels like we, you know, um, we can't breathe. I said, the word is, you know, that, that in the beginning it says, God created man 
and he said he breathed the breath of life into him and man became. And a lot of times what's happening is we don't breathe enough into people so they can become. And so life can happen in corporate America. Life can happen in a youth group. Life can happen whenever you breathe life and joy will come when the breath is there and you become a living soul. Gifts. Um, you give life and life produces gifts. And so, which is what, we're, what I do. I, I take what I have, I give it to people, and what I give to people is gifts of life and gifts that keep on giving. The biggest thing that when, when you have, when you want joy, you've got to know that your joy cannot be dependent upon what you do. It has to be dependent upon who you are and who you are emits something else that produces joy in others, which is when you have an organization, an organism is a living thing. And so if you have a living thing and you're, the, the reason people want to work for you is because it gives them a sense of being. And if what you bring to the employees and to your corporation is that you keep breathing new life into them and you keep breathing something into them, it causes your organization to grow. It causes your organization to succeed. It causes your organization to prosper uh, because when people are happy, they'll produce. And if you cannot get people to a place where they are happy, you will always have a struggle in your production. And when you have joy that is infectious, it will always change the atmosphere. It will always cause people to feel like, I can do this and I can do more of this. And even when you're tired, that's the thing about purpose and the joy of what you do, is that even if you're tired, when you enjoy and are part of what you do, it is such exciting, you can do it when you're a dog tired and it will still give you energy. Now you may fall out after it's all over, but the point, like for me as an artist, I can be dog tired, I can perform for two hours. And if you feel like I just, ah, when I get off the stage and I'm through, it's like, ah, you know. So because it's what, who I am always energizes me to be able to give to others. And that's my joy. And when I give of myself, then I find this, you know, and it feel, you feel like you've been uh, drained when you over, when you just give, I would say like, even like this particular thing, you're, you're going around, you're causing people to feel something and have to think about something. Now you might be tired after it's all over, but when this, but while you're doing it, you're energized by it and you feel it and you say, I can do this even if I'm tired. Well, I would say that people who have created their own bubble of life or what they consider life for themselves and don't want to share it and, and feel like, you know, they, and, and really don't want to open themselves up will, will resist anybody that brings life. Um, people that want it, you, you can't feed a, a, a person that's not hungry. Um, you know, and, and as if you, if you want joy, if you want to have that sense of peace so that when you go home at night, you're not just going home, but you can go home with a level of thinking and thought and you can rest because joy will bring rest. If you're not, a, with, if you don't have joy, you will be tossing and turning all night. You'll wake up tired, you'll wake up irritable, you'll wake up impatient, you will wake up all with everything that every, you know, people will be scared to talk to you because you are not at peace with yourself, you don't have joy within yourself, you don't enjoy what you do. You just like the results of production. And if they don't produce, you're angry. But joy will say, if they're not producing, maybe there's something I need to give to them to respond to. My chair of joy is in my living room. Um, I live on the fourth floor, and so I have a balcony. And so my, my chair of joy would sit in front of my uh, my my balcony window, and so that you can you can see and look out and see the vastness of the the, the sky and 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 see the, the the birds flying and see the trees blowing and and find and take a little cup of coffee and just sip and just feel like 
and breathe in and experience all that life has to offer to you so that you can be able to breathe that life back into the people that you have to go and face every day. If, that, if people did this four times a day, I believe what we are experiencing now in our global community where people are literally angry, the world is at its, they're at each other's, I mean, we're divided in every area from religion to political arenas or whatever, we're just divided. But if people would just take a moment and just stop and just say, let me breathe life into you and not look at you as a political party or a religious party or black or white, you know, that, that, that you know, black lives matter or all lives matter or what, it's, it's, it's about forget all of that, life. Everybody is life and let me breathe new life into you and it changes the world. Joy is the answer uh, because when you operate in joy, it will always be contagious. It will always affect people around you. Um, it will affect the atmosphere that you're in. It will shift any atmosphere that you walk in um, so that there's ev never ever the moment where you have to feel like that you cannot breathe. Joy will always cause you to have fresh breath. Joy is the answer. Actually, I think it's good because it has caused me to have to think about and to reflect on. And, I, and actually, it's, it's actually challenging me to take what I'm, ex, what I'm ex, expressing now to a whole nother level with my own organization to get them to be able to even think like that because you're challenging thinking processes. And so when you think about it now, you know, you take it everywhere you go because you're going to, you know, this, this, this challenge, because really that's what you are, you're releasing a challenge in the atmosphere. So the, this, this, this joy chair is a challenge that you would see on Facebook, the joy challenge. <laughs> so um, the chair of joy um, is, I think is very needed um, as, as, as CEOs and people who are under a lot of pressure and stress. Um, Cheryl um, will cause you to, to reflect on areas that may be even difficult to think about. But once you think about them, you're going to be freed up and you're going to cause um, everything around you to flourish. In fact, you'll think that you're a Simba in The Lion King. So that when Simba went back and got into his rightful place, everything around him turned green, everything began to flourish. That's what's gonna happen to you. You just going everything around you is gonna prosper. Your company's gonna increase. People around you are gonna feel better. Simba, Simba, Simba. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs>